our official checks that we're ready to go. And we hope you settle in and enjoy what we hope is a terrific match between Mexico and the United States. So Portillo served on the right side, Franco left side. Lee just killing the, uh, killed the ball to earn an opportunity to serve first game. Good start for the Americans. That's what they wanted. You notice Lee is a left-hander. Can be a big advantage in doubles, allowing both players to hit on their forehand. Beautiful shot from Portillo. Both of these players in the back are very talented. I think have a, a future in the professional realm, as does Rojas in the front. He's played a few pro stops himself. This is the first time I've seen Lee at the junior scary. Me too. Yeah, Rojas has that family tree of players historically. His brother Antonio Rojas is here competing in the 16 division. All four players are very, very talented. Point called. Avoidable hinder. Portillo said, uh, thought that Rojas was in the way. And a replay 0-0. Zero, zero. Now it's 1 0. Previous point, folks, was uh, called a replay, dead ball hinder, and now they have scored their first point. Now it's the second point. Well, this is what the U.S. don't want to do. They don't want to give Mexico easy points, make them earn it. Good pickup from Rojas on the right side. And another point for Team Mexico. Three quick points. Wow, there's a nice shot. Rojas on the right side. So here's Franco. Franco had a, an accident when he fell through the glass of a back wall <coughs> while playing when he was 14 and severely injured himself and had multiple surgeries and you can see on his left hand it's it's required surgery not able to use it like he could but fortunately for him he's right-handed and still able to swing that racket very very effectively and one thing i've noticed gary watching him play professionally over the past year is how much he's improved in one year Reconstruction surgery, he's obvious, obviously made the uh, adjustment. I mean, this guy is top tier player. That was a great pickup by Rojas. Lee just wasn't quite ready for it. Yeah. Franco won the Mexican National Juniors. And to get there, he defeated Longoria, who had won the 18s last year. And so we see Franco. He's also, he and Portillo are playing in the 18s. And we, who knows, we may see them both in the final. If you're interested in our draw, visit our website, internationalracquetball.com. Click on events, live events. You'll see all of the draws for all of the ages, starting at 10 and going up through 18. Lee serving, trying to get point number one for USA. Flat rollout, Franco. 
He's the defending 18 doubles champion from last year with his partner Longoria. Not a great inning for Team USA, Tim. This is the 29th version of the IRF World Junior Racquetball Championships. It started in Miami years ago as the Orange Bowl Festival and has transitioned and has been held in many cities. We'll review those later. Again, Mexico just putting on a clinic right now, 4-0. One thing I love about Portillo, he's so smooth, Gary. An air of nonchalance, we'll call it confidence, Tim. I called it fluido the other day, and my Mexican friend said, no, that's not a great word. That doesn't translate. Fluid <laughs> doesn't translate from English to, Me to Spanish like it should. Doesn't, but that's how it doesn't translate to Mexican, huh, Tim? <laughs> Maybe to Guatemala. <laughs> It's been a long day, Gary. We <laughs> hope you're enjoying the commentary and all we've brought to you today and also throughout the week. It's been so much fun watching all these players compete so hard. Rojas there, though, with a mental mistake. 7-0 Mexico. Yeah, too much. Time out on the floor. Folks, tune in tomorrow. Semifinals and then... Saturday for the finals, 29th IRF World Junior Racquetball Championship. We'll be back. We have eight matches tomorrow featuring a variety of age ranges. Uh, one of the players I'm hoping to see tomorrow, not only uh, Fernandez, who we saw play in doubles, would like to see him play singles. Yeah, a lot of people have been talking about him. Gabby Martinez, of course, we've already seen today. She's the defending champion in her age group, moving up into the 18s. Uh, Barrios, who is playing in 16s and 18s and advances to the semifinals in 18s in a tiebreaker win against Holly Scott of the U.S., playing well above her age. And last but not least, Diego Garcia, the 16s division from Bolivia, Terrific player, Gary. We saw him last year just tear apart everybody Tremendous he played. Tremendous player. World, world champion skills. And he and his doubles partner are competitors in Bolivia, he and Garçon. And they'll be playing doubles together as well. Miranda hits it so hard. Combine those two can be devastating. We saw them take apart a doubles team last night. Portillo, smooth, efficient. Effective, 9-0. Skip ball. U.S. just seemed really flat, Gary. No momentum, no enthusiasm, no bouncing up and down. Lots of deep size looking down. And it was just a clinic. If you yeah. want to learn how to play racquetball, Watch the Mexicans in this match. Yeah, lack of energy. Maybe for a number of reasons. Another skip by Lee. 12-0. So if you are U.S. coach, wh what do you do? You said it's a lack of, it, it's for a number of reasons. What do you do to try and at least correct one of those one or two of those two, re uh, excuse me, those reasons in order to make this a little bit more competitive. Well, you can use the resources you have. That is your timeout. You have one remaining. Should they call it here? Well, why not? They s Mexico still has to score three more points. Want to generate some type of momentum to carry into the second game. So let's see if they can get on track here. Mr. Lee serving. 0-12, game one. Goes with the Z, back to the ceiling. And nobody's covering. Lack of communication on that one. Wide angle winner. 
wide an angle, hitting the sidewall instead of going cross court to the back wall so that when it hits the sidewall, it bounces back to the middle of the court behind both players who are standing side by side. Two serves now in all divisions of IRF play. Jam that ball into the sidewall glass and Lee couldn't negotiate it. So here we are, game one, Mexico trying to close this out. Ceiling balls aren't going to work, Tim. It becomes batting practice for Team Mexico. you got to be somewhat aggressive. Such a touch from the young Mexican. 14-0, game point number one. We'll see if their body language changes when they start game two. It appears that they were resigned midway through the first game that they were going to lose that game. Unfortunately, they didn't score a point. We're back with game two, folks. This is Gary with Tim and Laura. And you're watching Team USA serve, trying to <laughs> get back in this match. They lost the first one, 0-15, to Team Mexico. Uh, like to recognize our head official, Franco Opondegui from Buenos Aires in Argentina. This is the last match of the evening quarterfinal. I like this from Rojas. He played a singles earlier in the day, one against Seth Cubillos from Colombia in a tiebreaker, and he won it because of good drive serves. We didn't really see that in game one. And so now he's coming out, crunching the drive serve, trying to create more offense. Look at that, two quick points. Momentum's changing, this is better. Sorry, yeah, two quick points. Not only that, he's going across into his partner's side. Different twist. Side out, but that's a better start. Absolutely. As you said, they scored two more points in that inning than they scored in the entire uh, first game. Great pickup, Rojas. But Franco showing his skills, not once, but twice. Yeah. They have to attack those balls. Going to the ceiling is counterproductive. Terrific wide angle. Rojas wants it. And a nice pass down the right side. Starting to hear the crowd getting into it. More energized. I think they were resigned after the start in game one. They resigned. They're going to lose it, so maybe they're saving for game two. Let's see what Lee can do here. Good rally. Great rally. Rojas runs forward, great, rolls great it shot. out. Took it out of the air, pinched it right side from the service line. Well, that was definitely the best rally of the match. Absolutely. Lots of good defense, lots of good shooting. Not really sure what's going on here. I think our official was talking to the people in the, in the wall behind the wall to our left. Lee serving left side. Bronco. That should be an avoidable hinder. Safety hold up number one. It looks like they're replaying it. Skip 
called. Another point for the Americans. It's just a different game. Yeah. Body language. Comes some more energy. A couple of unforced errors by Team Mexico. Gets them right back in, at least from an emotional standpoint. Team Mexico trying to tie this up. Wow, what a great get. Appreciation from the left side of this crowd. Dominated by the Mexican team. Two serving three. Half lob right. Reverse, reverse, Tim. Great shot by Mauro. Really difficult to do above the shoulder. Going over to the left side and rolling it out. Call a skip ball. No argument by Team Mexico, although they're asking their coaches if they should appeal. Second set of eyes. It's not a bad idea. No. Let's see how long Team USA can enjoy a lead. Hopefully they can forge a tiebreaker. Don't count him out. Comes left side again. Not that time from Lee. Just seemed to half step slow there. So Tim, previous inning, pounded drives left side. So why did he go to the lob? Being the psychologist here, buddy. He was successful with the drives. And he goes back to the lob. Just wanted to let that point finish. Another great rally. You know, maybe you want to try something different. Maybe you think that your opponent is getting used to that. Uh, we also have to think about fatigue. I Absolutely. mean, he had a very long match, not just a, a few hours ago. And uh, I was down there taking some photos, and they were flying all over the court. Speaking of flying all over the court, you saw the pro pen, the official ball, flying pieces flying all over the court. So Franco will replace that one with a new one and will repeat that rally. USA 4, Mexico 2, game 2. Wow, great shot there. Franco earns his team an opportunity to score points. Good serve. The skip ball. You don't see that too often from uh, Portillo. It's two serving four. a good shot. Better look. Rojas puts it down. Side out USA. Starting to see that change in momentum, Gary, and it's amazing how two minutes in between a game can do that. Mm -hmm. Lee looks a little more animated now. Might be a replay. Half out. I think we'll appeal this. They will, the U.S. Overturned on the right side. So both line judges uh, disagree with our official, which is why we have the line judges to help address those situations when we have a replay. And no appeal you, so you still have three. Great pickup, Franco. That's a nice pass. 
And they earn a point for their efforts. Beautiful shot there on the right side, Portillo. Second server. USA lead 5-2. They have a discussion. Play. Great shot right side. Team Mexico. And Portillo a little animated. Don't usually see that for Correct. him. Two five. This is a different second game. Oh, say they're trying to converge the, uh, the spread. That'll certainly help. Well, Rojas just has to let that one go. He knows that he's too good for that happen to for that to happen twice in a row. Great shot, Rocco. Pinch right side winner. So now we're back to 4 5, one point spread. Half out, two bounces called. Plenty of noise from the American t contingent on the right side. Sounds like Latin America in here. But that was a great shot from Franco. Ties it up by five. Look at Rojas moving up to the encroachment line. Lee. Backhand winner, left side. And that's difficult, Gary. Sometimes when you're playing doubles, you hit one side so much. Mm -hmm. When you have to switch over and hit that other side, you make a mistake. <laughs> Left up shot, Mauro. Second server. Serving across to the middle. Oh my. Lee just didn't move his feet there. Got caught a little bit unaware. It is difficult in that back left corner, the glass on the sidewall, on the back. It is tricky. Rojas this time with the winner. Still 5-5. Five, five. That was all Rojas Portillo. Eventually the American skips it. The Mexicans now have a two point lead. It's seven five. It was five, it was two five, now it's seven five. 
no timeout called either, right? Charlie Pratt and his staff have not used a timeout this game. Great pickup from Lee, and oh, he earns nice the effort Lee. there. So coming in, 5-7. Gather composure, score a point, then another. Question from Bronco to Bronco Copendegi, our head, uh, head referee. I'm not sure what the discussion was about. I want to thank all of our officials here at the International Racquetball Federation who give their time and effort for this sport. Long, long days for everybody. And Mexico are going to take a timeout. It's six serving seven. Tim, let's talk about some of the differences in IRF rules to U.S. racquetball rules. Uh, I stand corrected. Uh, earlier I said there are three available appeals, or only two. Now that rule changed in 2016. It used to be five, five, and a tiebreaker, three uh, usable appeals. Now it's two per game. Timeouts, two per game, one minute length on the serve, both the server and his or her partner in doubles may leave their respective zones as soon as the ball is struck. Uh, unlike the U.S., both players have to wait till the ball crosses the short line. Also, there are some subtle changes or differences in equipment timeouts and avoidable hinders. Folks can go to internationalracquetball.com for the set of rules. And we encourage everybody to get started with this game. It's just a, it's a lifetime sport. Great exercise, a lot of fun. Well, here you can see great effort there from Franco. Trying to get it to the front wall. You <laughs> can see Portillo. the- Look at Portillo, Portillo's disgust. And the US crowd in the back, very excited by the outcome of that point. Lee, animated. Forehand winner. Well, the timeout didn't work, Gary. We've, we've talked about timeouts and how they can be an advantage to the team or individual taking them, but not in this case. Correct. Uh, unscientific, 70, 75% successful. Groans from the Americans. Portillo <laughs> smiles. He guided that into the front with a flick of the wrist. Nobody home. So the U.S. has gone with uh, a different twist on their serves. Each player is going to their partner's respective side as opposed to their own with typical double. Ah, yes. Rojas. Left up shot, Rojas finishes right side. Hits it very hard. Really impressed with his drive serve today which effectively won him that match, in my opinion. Wow. Rojas raising his hand, saying the ball skipped. There's an appeal. Oh, you can make your judgment wherever you're watching. Call will stand. And one of the two appeals is used. Oh. 37 feet, leaning back, snap forehand winner. Really tough, he produced so much power from that as well. There it is. And there's the animation from Rojas. Let's go, he says. Seven serving nine. Lee scampers out of there. Oh, nice return kill shot.
it's astonishing how momentum can change in matches and it's important to realize that when you're playing not only when you're losing and it gives you hope but also when you're winning and understanding that just because I won a game very easily doesn't mean that I'm going to win the next game very easily which is why we so often see tiebreakers correct The closer the Americans can keep it, the more pressure on the Mexicans. Oftentimes after winning handily, like Mexico did, there's a letdown. Between the legs from Lee. Not that time. Uh, Lee was forced onto the right side and got stuck onto the wall. Got handcuffed with that last shot. Lee into the floor, unfortunate. Point for Mexico, five points away from this match. Lee, front side. This is tough. Yeah, textbook. Straight in, straight back. Handcuff Mauro along that right side wall. Back to two point spread, Tim. One of the things we've commented this week is how often players want to go cross court instead of down the line. And when they do want to go down the line, they hit the sidewall. There was Portillo guiding it straight down the line, perfect. I think the ball went out there, so and still 11-9. And out is half out, folks. Change of server in doubles. Points, nine. Three points away from earning a timeout trip USA. To the, uh, yes, they should, but uh, you and I are coaching off limits here. And a great return from Rojas. You saw he went over to the left hand side to take that. Nine serving 12. Goes back left. Terrific get. Case in point, Lee went cross court. Oh, Aaron shot the backhand. And Rojas, so half out, Lee serving. 9-12, game two. 29th IRF Junior World Racquetball Championship. Franco Presionante. Twelve nine. Three points away. Last match on these seven courts. Plenty of people still in attendance. Oh, nice, That's nice. Really tough to take that, return it with the power that it came. Let's go, he shouts, half out. Nobody home. So as you said earlier, Tim, Mauro came left to return the serve and Lee got stuck. Two points from victory. 13-9. And Lee skipped it. Just a little miscommunication between the two. They both went for it. That brings up match point number one. There's their timeout. Okay, 
and they still have one remaining in this game. Mexico elect to stay on the court. It's been a much better second game from the Americans, forcing the Mexicans into a little bit more sloppy play. Mexicans were on fire in game one. U.S. struggling. We saw then USA switching sides in game two, trying a few different things. Rojas starting to hit harder. And as a consequence, they have nine. But Mexico have 14. Let's see if they can close it out on match point number one. Yeah, the communication issue. I'm not convinced that they've practiced this uh, rotation. Serving to your partner side's one thing, but uh, on the defensive end, not your lead knows where to go. That's terrific from Rojas. You can't do it better than that. We'll also recognize, and one of the challenges in the U.S. is how spread apart players are. And so they're not necessarily training in the same club and can play doubles together. True. The Mexican team, both players live in San Luis Potosí, train and play together, and have for years. Rojas in California, Lee in Texas. Replay call. It's a good call. Safety hold up. 9-14. Rojas looks back to Coach Bobby Horn for instruction. Short serve. Look, notice that uh, Mauro stepped across the front line, but as long as part of the foot is touching the service line, which is the front line, serve is okay. Great shot. Little right. fist from pump from Portillo. You don't see him getting very animated very often. <laughs> Great shot. Match, match point number two for Mexico. Deal. Half lob right side. Wow. They staved it off. Beautiful. Rojas. Let's see if Team USA can serve again. Need to get save off match point number three here. And Rojas played extremely well in game two, but ends it with a skip. These players have played each other a lot. We've seen them at juniors a lot. Mexico advanced to the semifinals, defeating the USA 15-0, 15-9. Gary, your final thoughts? The better team won. Uh, as you said earlier, perhaps uh, Rojas having play, played singles today and had a tough match with Cubillos. Uh, the energy wasn't there. He, he showed uh, sparks in the second game, but Mexico's the top team in the world right now. So we expect them to win the whole thing.